I say to you that we make relationships around the world primarily because we understand and we see what's happening. It would be totally, I'd be derelict in my duty if I, as a leader in such a time as this, not make the children of God aware of where we are and actually how we need to pray and how we need to position ourselves in this present world. I think that prescience, uh, foresight, and having revelatory experiences with God is significant in the time we live in, particularly if we're directing and guiding people into the things of God and also into the way they should live, what they should expect, what they shouldn't expect, and actually what's going on in the time in which we live and how, again, I'm being repetitive, how we need to position ourselves. I'm going to put some screens over there and over there equal to these so that those on the side, uh, I won't hear anybody crying about not being able to see and uh, clearly, because I need you to see clearly, I need you to understand. The projects that we're throwing out now is indicative of the move that we're making because it's important for us as a church to understand that our role is to save as many people socially, economically, spiritually, psychologically, intellectually as we can. People perish from a lack of knowledge. And we inspired, of course, I, I intentionally, by the grace of God and through his direction. Uh, every now and then I got to throw in some inspiration and you got to, you know, uh, be, get happy. But every now and then we got to sit down and discuss some serious things that are affecting us and we need to know truth. We need to know truth. Uh, I just have to have the truth. I may not do anything with it, but I need the truth. Uh, and, and so, I want to open by saying that in Galatians, he is writing to us 2,000 years ago approximately. And he is saying to us, as it relates to the Lord, he gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. The question uh, becomes, is the world any better today than it was when he wrote that? Is the world a better place? After 2,000 years of gospel preaching, after thousands of years of Judaism, way more uh, than Christianity, Judaism, of course, if we're taking it back all the way to uh, Moses, I don't think you can take it to Abraham, can we, uh, Yosef? I don't think we can go to Abraham. But I think the Judaism in its real power, even though it's traced all the way back to Genesis, I think the power in terms of its regulatory uh, indication would be when you had the law. With Judaism, with Christianity, with Hinduism, with Islam, with Buddhism, with all of the major religions of the world and including Christianity, the question is, is the world a better place? Now, when he wrote that, we have had all kinds of situations with the Medes and the Persians, we've had the Greeks, we've had the Romans, uh, yes, we've had uh, uh, the Mongolians, we've, yes, we had Genghis Khan, 
uh, yeah, you can check through history. We have Shanakrib, we have uh, uh, Tilgath Pileser. We've had all kind of tyrants and we've had all kinds of imperialists. But when he wrote that, we didn't have World War I. We didn't have Hitler, World War II. We didn't have Jews being slaughtered, six million. We didn't have 20 to 30 million folk uh, left in the Atlantic because of the slave trade. Uh, we didn't have any of that, and at that point he called it this present evil world. Yes. Now, you notice then that the action of Galatians is indicative of the fact that Jesus came to deliver us. And the us that he was talking about then, obviously, was the Galatians and himself, us, from this present evil world. I suggest to you very mildly that whatever weaponry they had in that day, one of these boys with an AK, an AR-15 or AK-47 could demolish half of anybody's army by the time they pulled that bow out. <laughs> and when our forefathers were talking about everybody needed to be armed, that was the time of muskets. That was a time when uh, all of us could get out of here. Somebody come here and he's got to prop his stuff up and put something down in here. If you got shot behind that, uh, you had to be uh, in a wheelchair or something. And certainly I would push you out of here by the time he got that thing together, we would be gone. The, the evil of man and his disposition to be wicked and his intellectual prowess and his ability to create and to invent things that are only for the reason of killing other people has made this world even worse than the present evil world that he was talking about. So when we take that into consideration, then we got to ask ourselves, what is our mission? because we have to ask ourselves, how are we to account for this world being so evil? And we have to ask ourselves, has God lost control over the world? Or is he permitting some other agency to have its way? I'm here with you. I'm here with you. Has he lost control? And we're in a Christian matrix, and of course, uh, nobody in here would want to say that God has lost control. Mm -hmm. Or has he allowed the free will of man to operate within a system that he has given man dominion over. Uh, see, see, I, I tell you we're going to talk today. We, we can hoop. I don't have my hooping clothes on. And I told the fellas whenever I take the mic in my hand, then I'm going to give you the old time preach. But uh, we, we need to suspend that for a minute. Once he has given us free will and he has given us dominion over the earth, then if we decide to do something that he doesn't like and he intervenes and messes with the outcome of our choice when we don't when he doesn't like our choice, then we don't have free will. Can I talk to you about that? 
One of the problems we have as human beings is we want the luxury of choice, but we don't want the consequences of what we choose. And oftentimes we, we blame God for not interfering and offsetting the consequences of our choice. But if he interfered every time we did something that would hurt us, or if he interfered, maybe he might say, uh, now that choice is going to give him way too much pleasure. And I don't want him that happy. The point I'm making, as ridiculous as it sounds, is that he is not interfering with your choices because he gave you free will. And then we blame him for that. Oh yeah, Lord, if you knew or since you knew how I was going to be treated by choosing that man, why would you let me choose him? Lord, you know that woman wasn't going to cook. And I went after her with everything I had you should have stopped me. But if he interferes, then you don't have free will. Which means that once he gives man dominion, and he tells him how to operate in his world that he is giving him dominion, then the world is left to the choices of the individuals who are in it. Here is why I know for a fact that God has not lost control of this world. Which means then that if he's not lost control and he is permitting man to have dominion, then he has a day appointed. Woo! When he is going to take it over. But until then, can, can I make it even worse? All right, I'm going to make it worse before I make it better. He came to his own. He came to save us from this present evil world. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But then he slips in another clause, but as many as received him, to them gave he power. So he comes to everybody, but everybody did not receive him. But he had a few out of the number of everybody who received him. And he gave those who received him power to become the sons of God. Now, he came to his own and he had given them records of his coming. Prophetic word, the Torah, the Pentateuch, the Psalms, poetry, the prophets. Everybody pointed and talked about him coming. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, 
Prince, mighty God, Prince of Peace, mighty God, everlasting Father. And when he came, didn't know him, didn't receive him. When Herod heard about him coming, what did he do? He killed every child he could in Bethlehem that was a man child, trying to get to him. Now you know the world's got to be evil when the creator can't even get a space. Then the world crucified him. Same world he came, the same world for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son and the world crucified him. The world. Well, what constitutes the world? Well, the Gentiles, the Jews, and the Christians. Now, you gotta ask the question, well, how did the Christians do it? Well, Pontius Pilate was a Gentile. The Sanhedrin Council, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the high priests, the Herodians, the Libertines, they were Jews. And Judas was a Christian. Uh, wasn't Judas a follower of Christ? Didn't Judas have, wasn't he the treasurer? Judas even had an office in the church. The significant thing here is to understand where we're going wrong in Laodicea. Is we're looking from the outside at a group of people on the inside and we're calling everybody the body of Christ. I ain't going to church no more because there ain't nobody church ain't doing right. The church that you see may not be doing right, Laodicea, but you got some folk in the church that you see ain't doing right who are right and doing right. Uh-huh. Because if you look at the disciples Jesus had, there was one in the middle who was the son of perdition. Everybody that goes to church don't have the church in them. And even in this present evil world, you got people who have been called out to be representatives of his name. God has somebody in the city of refuge that's holy. God's got somebody in this house that's right. So don't let a few label a rest. Uh, let, me, let me digress for a minute. Can I digress? Uh, we were discussing a problem we had, uh, Joe and I, because we're working so hard to get community involved, and particularly this police violence business, and the neighborhood, and the church, and, and all of us. Now, in this discussion, I discovered that I have to write a preamble because we got a problem. We got a problem because we've got a group of community people who all are being viewed as criminals by the police. Now, I got I to... Gotta, I got to make it plain. Here is the police. Here is the clergy. 
Here is a community. Now, the, we're trying to get the police to see that everybody in the community is not a criminal. We've got maybe 5% or less of the bad eggs who make the police scared when they see anybody black. And God help you, I was in New York with a group of preachers sitting in the car going to a meeting. I was staying at a hotel uh, uh, that was opposite to where I, the, the, the people, uh, I was staying at the Trump and I was preaching for Al Sharpton. <laughs> and I just told my office, put me where I usually stay and they put me in the Trump. But then all the Democrats were over here and I was over there. Uh, uh, Hillary was there and Bernie was there and I'm over there. So when Al said, uh, Bishop, I'm sending a car for you, I said, no, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> so, so I had some of my boys come get me because I didn't know that I'd made a blunder. Anyway, on the way over, four black men in a car the windows tinted all the way down. And the driver decides he want to be on the phone. I say, isn't there a law in New York that you shouldn't be driving and have the phone? He say, yeah, 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 but, but we all right, Rev, we all right. Well, we stopped at a light and sure enough, the police was right there, saw him on the phone, knocked on the window, and the windows were all tinted. I lowered my window all the way down <laughs> so he could see all the way through. And I said, officer, I told him <laughs> that he should get off the phone. And of course, he laughed himself to death and let us go. But you got to understand what I'm saying. Because of the few they brand all of us. Now, the reverse is because of the few evil policemen, we brand all of them. Uh-huh. And the problem we have in the middle is because of the few bad ones in ministry, all of us are branded. Until we can expose all the bad ones, we'll never get the progress we need for those of us who are good. The problem with the church in Laodicea is it doesn't want to clean up its own house. The problem with the police is they don't want to clean up their own house. The problem with the community is they don't want to clean up their own house. So you got a few people in the community, in the clergy, in the police, who are holding every good person hostage because in the church, we say you judging, in the community you say we snitching, in the police, you're saying you ain't covering your buddies. But truth will clean up the house. And we got to get away from lying to each other and start telling the truth.
So in this present evil world, uh, give me 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. You've got to understand that in this present evil world, you've got two spirits operating in this world. I'll take my time here. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now, what Paul has just declared is that there is a spirit of the world, there is a spirit of God in contradistinction, in opposition to each other. Now, understand spirit of the world. In the earth, there is kingdom principles and world principles. Spirit of the world. Now, as a child of God, all of us are coming out of the influence of the spirit of the world. Nobody in here was born under the influence of the Spirit of God. I'm looking for you. All of us were born under the influence of the Spirit of the world, and not only that, we were all born in sin and shapen in iniquity. We were all born messy. Baby start lying, you and I lied before we could talk. Crying, but nothing wrong with us. Just want to get picked up. Oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? Oh my God, something wrong with the baby. Soon as you pick him up, oh. <laughs> Be not transformed. Conform. Don't stay conformed once you've been born again. Now, notice how strong this is. You cannot just change from the world system to get into the kingdom. You, you just can't change. Now, uh, it was, it was, it was, it wasn't Aristotle, it was Plato. Plato says if you take Eros and you clean it up to its highest denomination, it'll become agape. I said, eh, you're wrong. You're wrong. Plato, you're wrong. I don't care how you clean up eros, it can't become agape. Because eros is always looking for something in return. Always. Yeah, I took you out to dinner. say sacrificial. You dress up for eros. Real mannerly and kind eros. Eros is always investing looking for returns. But not agape. 
Agape is giving of itself without any care except love for the object. If the object never responds, agape has already spent itself. You can't make one the other. So in order to operate in the love of God, as a child of God, you got to be born again. Now, now you got to understand what he's saying. What he's saying is that that is born of flesh is flesh. And that is under the control of the spirit of the world. That that is born of spirit is spirit. And that's controlled by the spirit of God. You just can't walk in the salvation. You got to be born in the salvation. And I'm telling you, why am I teaching like this? My intent is to get somebody saved. Now, and I tell you what I did today in case you didn't know, and it was real intentional, very intentional. I am preaching to get somebody saved. I sent the real estate lady to get somebody rich. Can you, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear. The real estate lady, her job is to get you rich. My job is to get you saved. The problem with the church is it forgot its job. It's trying to get you rich at the cost of leaving you lost. You ain't got to be born into real estate. You just got to learn it. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm not. I'm tired. I'm really tired and, and every now and then you need to be encouraged by realigning yourself. You know, what, I, what I've learned is that encouragement comes when you realign to the things of God. And when you realign to the things of God, then he adjusts your expectation. I, 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 I am waiting for Top Gun Maverick to come to the TV because it's too much floating around in the theater. Uh, you got to, you know, I want to go enjoy a movie. I don't want to be worrying about what I'm breathing. Well, that might be monkeypox right there. <laughs> I don't want to be, that might be another strain of COVID. The air changed a while ago. I don't want to be doing that. So I already bought it. The man says to Maverick in the trailer, he said, I don't know what good you have, what good you have for the Army, for the Air Force. I don't know why he would select you. I don't know what good you could possibly be. And I heard Maverick say something that was interesting. He said, well, I want you to know, I don't know what you could teach us. He said, I want you to know I'm not a teacher. And I'm telling you I'm not a teacher to control your expectation. We have broken the saints with this health, wealth, and prosperity teaching as if we are designed or we or as if we have an anointing for making other people wealthy. What we did was we played tricks on other people by making ourselves wealthy 
by suggesting that people get wealth by dropping money off at an altar. It don't happen like that. You have to have the discipline that deals with economics. When you come to church, you want the discipline that deals with saving your soul. I am anointed to set the captive free. I am anointed to give sight to the blind. I am anointed to lift the depression off of the oppressed. And I need to preach according to my anointing. Do what you're anointed to do and let the other people do what God assigned them to do and stop making a fool out of the saints. The spirit of the world. In 1 John chapter 4, 5 and 6, and we're going to read together. 1 John chapter 4, 5 and, and 6. And uh, it's very important now because they are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Now we're going to move to six. We are. Oh, God. oh Lord, I wish, I wish somebody could say that again. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. Now, if they are dancing to the tune of the world, they're not going to hear us. But if they are born, into the family that we have been born in, then we are of God and they that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby, 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 we know two spirits, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And I heard the Holy Ghost say, he will lead and guide into all. And ye shall know the truth. Back it up upstairs. Back up the teletron. I got to talk to you. Can't allow the church to drown in ignorance because the system of the world has found itself into the visible church. Now, now let me let me let me let me rephrase something. Uh, let me go over something. He came to his own, and as a whole, they received him not. Many has received him. The world crucified him. I went there, and now. He came to his own, the world crucified him, okay? So he took the crucifixion and made that positive because he took his blood and he saved, all right? Okay, now he's got a church going now. He got some called out believers. And the called out believers he called him out of the present evil world into the church. So how come he's outside knocking? Now, now, might I just present this? His own didn't take him. The world 
couldn't stand him. And now he can't even get into his own church. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now, now, let's go over it again. He came to his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him. For God so loved the world, the world, the whole thing, he gave his only begotten son that the world might believe. Uh -uh. He gave it that the world might be saved, yes? But who so ever believe it? Why does he need that if the whole world was going to be saved? He came to his own, they received him not, but as many. For God so loved the world, he gave whosoever believeth shall have life. Because everybody ain't gonna believe. Now he comes to the church that put him out, and here's what he says. Behold, I stand at the door now. If any man... If any man hear my voice, I will come in to him and sup with him. He ain't, he ain't coming to everybody because everybody ain't letting him in. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you better make your calling an election short. You can't wait for everybody. You better get it yourself. And when you get it, you reach for everybody, but don't expect everybody to respond to you. Get your expectation right. Get your expectation right or else hope that's deferred makes the heart sick. Why? Everybody ain't gonna respond to you. Everybody ain't gonna like you. Everybody ain't gonna like you. That ain't gonna ever happen. Amen. I'm almost finished. So, uh, I can tell you how wonderful it is. I was just told to take my time. But, you don't know the energy I have, so. <laughs> and, and talking on my favorite subject, the Bible. I, don't, I can talk about this all night. All night, now. As the end of the age, I, I want you to throw up my, throw up the threefold nature of man so I can just give an indication where I'm going uh, because I can't go there today. But, but get, my, get my trichotomy on the board and let me, let me work a little bit from that standpoint. Now, we have discussed and come to the conclusion that we got the Holy Spirit and we've got the spirit of evil. We've got the spirit of God and we've got the spirit of the world. Then we also went to, in one text, spirit of truth and we got now the spirit of error. And here we are in the middle 
of both spirits. And now I have to show you, by the grace of God, how and what influences. How does this negative spirit that I was born into, how does it have a hold? And how do I access the spirit of God to overcome and defeat the spirit of the world? because I have some entry points. And I've got to take control of the entry points. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, oh, the time is almost up. Uh, I'm going to tell you this. In this life, we are all going to have pain. We're going to have pain. Now, we either are going to have the pain of discipline or we're going to have the pain of consequence. We're going to have pain. We're going to have pain. Uh, in my old age, I have gathered a love for sweets. I have gathered love for sweets. And I think it's because I had a bout with drinking in my life and alcohol turns to sugar. And when you put the alcohol down, your body is still craving sugar. And since I don't eat beans with sugar in it, and I don't go to fast foods where they got sugar in everything, every now and then I get this real mean crave for sugar. Now they tell me get the dark chocolate, but one piece is too many and 40 pieces ain't enough. Once I get a hit of that chocolate, it's over. It's over. Now, some people not having dinner till the meat. Where is the meat? Where's the beef? God, I had a meat. And it ain't nothing. I don't care what you say. That's what my father would say. That I don't care what you say. Nothing tastes as good as pork. Now, I'm telling you. Now, you might as well tell the truth, say I've been everywhere, every kind of culinary splendiferous exercise. I've been there. But a piece of pork. Now, you either have the pain of discipline or you're going to end up with the pain of consequence. You're going to have pain. But it's better you control by discipline to keep you moderate so you don't overdo it. When I get this binge for that chocolate, it hurts to put it down. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm telling you, I have had friends who are now going to be with the Lord or going to be with somebody who 
could not put the ham and eggs down. And they had it, oh, I'm healed. You ain't healed. Couldn't do it. The pain of letting it go. That craving in the morning to let it go. But when the pain of consequences come, the heart is clogged. The stints are needed. Now it's out of your control. What God is saying is, I give you truth to give you control. And the control I give you will give you a blessing on the end and not damnation. Because you're going to feel pain. Can I talk to you? You've been angry with somebody and start crying because you couldn't get to them. Crying. They thought you were crying because you hurt. No, I'm crying because I can't choke him out. Restraint is painful, but at the end, it's glorious. It's glorious. That's why the Lord says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When I get to those entrances, and I don't know, maybe, maybe I ought to sustain from hollering and screaming and, and, and running up and down and sweating. And let's talk truth. Slowly comprehensively and if we're not inspired to jump and shout we will at least leave with some knowledge because if you're anything like me I want to know why am I not overcoming why am I not having the victory that I'm supposed to have in my life. Why am I waiting for a new anything from the store to make me feel good? Why? The end of the age draws near and things are rapidly declining. And as I close, I brought you something that is not really a happy hour thing. But I want you to be saved. And I want you to get ready for whatever's coming our way. But it's time to be saved. And we can deal with the rest of it. Let's get saved first. Let's occupy till he comes. They say there's an end time revival coming. If it's an end time revival, revive means that something had already lived and died and needs to come back to life. An end time revival cannot be crusading the whole world getting saved. An end time revival could only mean that the church awakens. The visible church that out of the visible church, people will come back to Jesus Christ and not come back to a building. There's a book written that's called The Hot, the Hot House Earth and by, by McGuire, he's an Englishman. And he finished the book, I'm reading just the last piece of it. He finished the book at the end of 2021. And he said, he said, I know a lot of people working in climate science who say one thing in public but a very different thing in private. In confidence, they are all much more scared about the future we face. 
but they won't admit it in public. I call this climate appeasement, and I believe it only makes things worse. The world needs to know how bad things are going to get before we can hope to start to tackle the crisis. McGuire finished writing Hot House Earth at the end of 2021, and he includes many of the record high temperatures that had just afflicted the planet, including extremes that had struck the United Kingdom a few months after he completed his manuscript, and as publication loomed, he found that many of those records had already been broken. He says the trouble with writing this book is about climate breakdown is by time it is published, it is already out of date. What's happening is happening so fast. The science told us if the earth heats up one more Celsius degree, we can't reverse it. They are telling me right now that places that were 80 degrees at the hottest are going to soar to 120. Fires are going to be more rampant. Volcanoes are stirring their face. We are in trouble. The ecology is wiped out. Now, why these diseases? Because few people in the world want to control all the money. They have contaminated the rivers, contaminated the oceans. Hear me. And hurricane season, watch it this year. Watch it. God told man, multiply, be fruitful, but here's what he said, replenish the earth. And that's one thing greed has stopped us from doing, replenishing the earth. We take, we take, we take, but we don't, we do not give anything back. And that's the problem with the world. The spirit of the world is Satan seducing us because we bring greed to the table. And we have insulted God, as I close, as if to say that my God did not know that there would be seven billion people on earth. God provided for all inhabitants of the earth, but because he gave us free will and a few of us got the upper hand, we are destroying the earth because we're greedy. Hear me, hear me, hear me. And as I close, I want every head to bow in this house. And I want you to make your own personal assessment. Your own. I want you to be really intentional and, and think about yourself right now. I need the old. I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to to thee. I need the old, I need the every hour, I need the oh bless, oh bless me now, me now, my, my sin. 
Father, I come in the name of Jesus. And I'm looking to that blood that you shed for me. And for each one of us in this house. And we come now open, open to you. And we say, we hear you knocking. And we want to let you in now. Come in, Lord, and restore us. Come in and refresh us. Come in and take our focus from the social media that we have become so addicted to and put us back in your word. We used to wake up first thing in the morning and as we lay in bed, we would thumb through the scriptures and hear your voice for the morning. But now we have just turned on our phones and spend the first few hours dealing with what the world has to say. Restore us, Lord. I hear you knocking. We're opening the door to rolling out of our beds in prayer in the morning so that we might start the day with you on our mind that we might move through that day conscious that we are your servants and whatever you direct us to do help us to do it we are tired of making you our servant but we haven't been good at it and we failed at it because you are Lord we can't send you out to make us rich and send you out as if you're some sort of butler. Teach us how to bow down and serve you as Lord. And I claim that right now. And as you do that, help our anointing to touch those who are not saved and save somebody now in Jesus' name. If you're in this building, if you're out and listening to me, wherever you are, my intention with this message is to show you that now, more than ever, you need to come to Jesus. You need to come to him because there is no mediator between God and man save the man Christ Jesus. And I'm calling you now Go to that private place and pick up your phone. Go to that private place and call 844-267-7729. 844-267-7729. Please, I need you to call.